2024 Toyota Grand Highlander first drive review, grander in size, power and price. The three-row SUV segment is one of the most hotly contested in the industry, and it's growing in more ways than one. Not only is the number of entries increasing, so too is the number of size offerings, we're seeing a split between smaller three rows and larger ones. Toyota's sole entry, the Highlander, has been on the smaller side of that divide through multiple generations, and although Toyota has said that was just fine for its loyal customers, clearly there was room, pardon the pun, for something bigger. That something would be the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. Despite the name, the addition of Grand doesn't just signify some added inches tacked on behind the rear wheels of a regular Highlander like an old Grand Caravan or the Lexus RXL. It uses the same TNGAK platform, but it's lengthened and widened for Grand Highlander duty. It's about 6.5 inches longer overall and 2 inches wider and taller. The entire design is unique, including an exterior that looks more like an extra-large IV4 due to its straight edges and hard creases. The Grand Highlander is also more refined and offers an excellent, exclusive powertrain that makes the SUV arguably even better than the standard model and a strong contender among the growing group of large three rows. Importantly, the Grand Highlander's additional exterior size translates to the interior, cargo space being the most obvious improvement over the standard Highlander. Behind the third row, there's 4.6 more cubic feet of space at 20.6, which on paper at least, represents the difference between one of the smallest and biggest volumes. Behind the second row, there's 57.9, an increase of 9.5 cubes. With all the rear seats down, total space reaches 97.5 cubic feet, amounting to a 13.2 cubic foot increase. Passenger space improves, too, mostly for the third row. It's still not huge, but now adults can occupy every row without the risk of the rear passengers launching a revolution against the bourgeois front passengers. Third row access is also impressively easy with the sliding seats and a lowered floor that extends behind the second row for easy step-in. In fact, every position is easy to access, particularly the driver and front passenger seats with the low floor and tall roof. Plenty of space in every direction and generally plush seats keep the front two rows quite comfy, though the tall, wide center console and front wheel well intrude into the front row's knee and foot room. Still, it's not a major problem, just a little odd for such an otherwise spacious SUV. Besides the extra space, the Grand Highlander has a revised interior design. It's a little more conventional, but still has trademark Toyota features like the shelves in the dash and up-to-date touchscreen infotainment system. For better or for worse, there isn't a huge difference in interior quality from the base models to the highly specified versions. They are all put together well and have soft, quality plastics. Higher trims have attractive leather options and some upholstered dash panels, but some of the painted plastics and faux wood trim don't feel nice enough to justify the pricing, particularly when several competitors rival entry-level luxury SUVs. The powertrains are another big selling point for the Grand Highlander with three choices. Most competitors offer one, maybe two. The first two are familiar, as they are shared with the regular Highlander. The standard engine is a turbocharged 2.4-liter four-cylinder making 265 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, and it's paired with an 8-speed automatic and either front or all-wheel drive. Maximum towing capacity is 5,000 pounds. While we recommend skipping it on the small Highlander in favor of the hybrid, we find the opposite is true here, assuming that you're not looking for maximum fuel economy. Toyota seems to have done something, possibly additional noise insulation, that significantly reduces the coarse thrashing of the four-cylinder. With that reduced, the healthy torque and responsive transmission shine. Combined fuel economy is the lowest for this powertrain at 24 miles per gallon with front-wheel drive, and 22 to 23 miles per gallon with all-wheel drive, depending on the trim level. The Grand Highlander's basic hybrid, which is the same naturally aspirated 2.5-liter four-cylinder ECVT setup with front or all-wheel drive, is much less enjoyable. 
its 245 horsepower is reaching its limits with 4,455 to 4,710 pounds of curb weight to haul around. Combined with the hybrid powertrain's electronically controlled CVT, it moves slow and sounds strained, the same as it is in our long-term Toyota Sienna. Towing capacity is also reduced at 3,500 pounds maximum. But, like with our Sienna, the fuel economy is just so gosh darn impressive that you might be able to forgive it. It has a combined fuel economy of 34 miles per gallon with front drive and 33 with all-wheel drive, greatly surpassing the fuel economy of its gas-only competitors. The regular Highlander hybrid is only slightly better at 35 to 36 miles per gallon combined depending on drivetrain and trim level. Unique to the Grand Highlander is the hybrid max powertrain. This one is closely related to the one in the Toyota Crown, differing only in tuning. It combines the turbocharged 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder with bigger electric motors, particularly in the rear, than the regular hybrid, as well as a six-speed automatic transmission. The result is 362 horsepower and 400 pound-foot of torque, eclipsing many of the segment's V6S in output. It also features the same 5,000 pound tow rating as the gas-powered model. It's not as efficient as the regular hybrid, a sacrifice in the name of output, but at 27 miles per gallon combined, it still beats most V6S. It even matches the hybrid Ford Explorer's efficiency, but with more power, more torque, and standard all-wheel drive. It's a sweetheart of a powertrain, with a meaty torque band that allows for smooth, easy acceleration, and the six-speed means it isn't constantly interrupted by shifts or hunting for gears. It's a surprisingly growly powertrain, helped in part by judicious application of the seamless artificial sound enhancement. And with the full-time all-wheel drive and beefier rear motor, the power split is more evenly distributed. This results in less pronounced understeer when powering through corners. This all makes the hybrid max far and away the most enjoyable powertrain, and we wish Toyota would offer a detuned, more efficient version to supplant the regular hybrid. While there are significant differences in powertrains, ride and handling are pretty much the same across the line. Up front is a McPherson strut setup with a multi-link independent arrangement at the rear, and the shocks are non-adjustable. Each Grand Highlander does have different driving modes, but they mainly adjust throttle and transmission response, even the steering seemed unaffected. The tuning is definitely toward comfort and control. It glides over bumps and stays steady. Handling isn't quite as eager as a result, what with the softness and body roll. The cabin is also impressively quiet. So as long as you're not looking to hustle your practical hauler, you'll be pleased with the Grand Highlander. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.